anything could happen. You know, we were assaulting the city with tanks and choppers and artillery and like, wow, you know, air stacked to the moon, what they told us, you know, it was, it was a big deal. Uh, very exciting and very just I don't, like unnerving almost. I joined the Marine Corps in 2002. I was 0311 rifleman, and I served as a, a point man in Fallujah and a team leader. Come from from a place where wasn't a whole lot of money, a whole lot of options. I was not college material, and then obviously 9/11 uh, happened. Um, that was my senior year. As soon as that happened, I went down to the recruiting station and signed up. There was four of us from my senior class that signed up in Marine Corps and went to boot camp together right after that. I wanted to fight. I wanted to go to war. I wanted to kill people who didn't, you know, were patriotic. You know, we got attacked. Like, that's what you do, right? Like, your country declares war and you go fight and kill people. So that's what I wanted to do. Oh, we knew we were going to Iraq. Probably not going to get lucky enough to catch them out in the middle of the desert anymore. It's it's going to be urban. So you think about, you know, obviously like dying and all that. But I don't know. I just remember being so excited, you know, like this is it. Like we're going to go, we're going to go do it. You fly into Kuwait first, uh, Camp Victory. And we got it. It was like midnight. And I just remember it was like 105 like at midnight and we were just like what the fuck man this, this is gonna be horrible <laughs> hotter and shit and dusty and nothing like as far as you could see there was just nothing everybody talked about Fallujah just being this hornet's nest and if they wanted to come out it was going to be nasty or if we had to go back in i guess that's really what everybody was talking about then was like when you go back in you know, because they had already went in in was it April of, of that year, um, just that it would be bad. Everybody in the world, you know, that was in charge of you was giving you pep talks, you know, moto speeches, getting you fired up, which is just like amazing. You know, it's like, I don't know, it makes your hair stand up. You know, you just like, get, Oh man, just getting pumped up, you know, getting ready for it. I guess we got in probably late evening. It was, it was still light out, but they had already started prepping the city um, with artillery and airstrikes. They were trying to go through and take out all the known enemy positions or positions they, they could see uh, from the air. And they wanted to take out every vehicle I remember that being a thing. They wanted to decommission every vehicle because they didn't want us to have to worry about uh, V-bids going in. So air and artillery, mortars that were just working overtime. And we set in for the night, dug in, and we just watched. I, you know, prayed, made my peace, and uh, just pretty much decided, well, you know, if it's my time, it's my time. It was a real gloomy day. It was overcast and it was spitting rain. And man, any day it rained in Iraq was a bad day. They dropped the gate. <laughs> I remember I, I had my foot up on it and I kind of rode it down. And Jacobs shoved me out, you know, and he's like, get going, boss. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, this is crazy. And, you know, I went out and took a knee on the first corner and cars blown up and the buildings and like I said, the power lines just hanging everywhere and trying to take it all in and get your bearings, you know, and you're just freaking amped up so hard. It, it was really weird, man. The main objective was this, uh, this mosque um, on the Euphrates. And, and it was, it was, it was full of weapons and cash. And uh, so that was our number one um, thing to hit. 
we hit that the morning of the second day. And that was and that was really cool. You know, main uh, main rounds from Abrams going in there and then, you know, going in. A couple days, a couple days later, I forget how many days, um, uh, was probably the next real real big point for us going down Route Henry. It was a bad idea, horrible idea. Um, it, it didn't make any sense tactically, uh, really. It was the main thoroughfare through Fallujah, and it was wide. And, but they had a zero, they had mortars. I mean, they, they had all kinds, of, they were still a lot of mortars on us down there. Uh, there was just pockets of, of fighters trailing everybody as we were going down through the open, they were just kind of trailing us and, and fighting all, all the way down that street. I remember we were stopped, you know, on tactical balls or whatever. And there's IED painted on this wall with an arrow. And I'm like, what the fuck? We're all like looking around, trying to find this. And then we start looking, then like there's more like IED painted on the street with an arrow. So I'm looking around, there's IEDs just laying there. Like they're, they're moving us so fast. They're not disarming the IEDs. And they're, they're just live sitting there and you're looking like, we need to move away from that. Like that's, that's still active and can go off right now. But we were just moving so, so fast down that road. We took a lot of casualties uh, on that road. You know, um, it was a big, big deal um, fighting down that road to get to, uh, I guess our, our company's main area of operations that we were gonna set up in, uh, which was, it was like the old mayor's complex, I believe, the mayor's house or some bath party member. It was like three huge mansions, which were pretty amazing, actually. Probably one of the best places I ever stayed in Iraq. It was nice, uh, but it was, it was big. Um, but it was a fight to get down there. And then we started operating out of um, them little firm bases and back clearing and more detailed clearing. People got trapped and they couldn't get out and they fortified themselves up and were just, they were gonna be there. They, that's where they were gonna die. You know, they were just waiting on us. They knew we were coming and they tried to do their best to prepare for us, you know. And my job at that time was pretty easy. It was just go indoor and don't die, you know. It was pretty much pretty straightforward. Third platoon got tied up in a house and it literally, you know, a block from where we were at. I just remember uh, Lieutenant Jacobs come running out the COC. He'd been in there and he was just screaming, let's go, let's go. They'd made entry into the house and they come across some guys that had just been set up, you know, just waiting for us and wanted to kill Marines. And they had a nice trap set. There was two groups of Marines stuck in different rooms of the house. There was insurgents up top to around a rotunda that looked down and uh, they told us they'd been lobbing grenades. And they said not to make entry into the center part of the house because they could see you. And uh, right before we got there, Byron Norwood had just got shot. They, they could see everywhere and they were still shooting down into doors because they could see us, they could hear us and they would rip rounds right into the open doorways. So I went with uh, Marquez and uh, Doc Aragon around to the kitchen and Staff Sergeant Chandler um, was laying in the kitchen. He had been injured and he was screaming like I, I never heard anybody scream like that. He was, he was screaming. It was so just like hot and humid and like stagnant. And well, they'd been dropping a lot of grenades in there that had wounded everybody. So like everybody set up uh, to lay down cover and fire um, in two Marines, Marquez and uh, Schaefer. They launched across um, the, the open floor uh, to the bathroom as we all laid down cover and fire. The saws are just ripping like the whole time, you know, and you can't see anything. I don't even know how they found the damn door over there. Cause like I said, you couldn't see anything through there. You couldn't hear anything. Like 
yours were just dead. They pulled them out um, and they started uh, getting them first aid and loaded up to go. And then we started just trying to do a tactical withdrawal from that point from the house. And the plan was we were gonna blow the house. I remember Gonzalez come in to set the charges. Um, I forget what it was. I know it was a full satchel, but maybe it was more. I remember everybody fucking running like hell across the street, you know, and we all got down and just waited. And that was, uh, I guess probably the first time I ever seen like pink mist because where he set uh, the charges, there was a lot of, a lot of blood. And it's not natural to, to see that. And it's different than shooting somebody, you know, and then that stuff stays with you. We lived in Shahabi for five and a half, six months before we went into Fallujah and we lost guys. I mean, we had guys killed. We had a lot of guys wounded. We are, we took replacements in the company before we even went into Fallujah. Um, I think we were the hardest hit Marine Corps unit in Iraq at that time. We were the most combat seasoned unit in Iraq at that time. Um, so we'd, we'd seen our share, the hearts and minds. You know, that was a big thing. We're, we're over there to win the hearts and minds. The more guys that get injured, the more IDs that go off, the more mortars that fall, that changes you. And you no longer really care about the hearts and minds in Iraq. And you want to do your job and just make sure that you go home and all your friends go home. The guys that made it, I'm glad. Uh, could have been a lot worse. We went in there and, you know, I, I think we did good. You know, we did what we were told, you know, we did what the U.S. set out to do in that city. We learned so much about our, our tactics as small units in urban environments, all of our knowledge, all of our takeaways that we had, all of our experiences from that. We were able to take and break down in classes and pass that knowledge on to the next generation of Marines that we're going over on the next deployments and hopefully keep them from making mistakes that we made and have them catch stuff that we didn't catch and just adapt to a, a changing environment um, in that conflict. Going home was nice. It, it was, uh, everybody was really patriotic, you know, still. A big welcome homes everywhere, free drinks, you know. Um, it was great. It was a little bit different, you know, after going through all that combat to come home and startle response and anxiety and, you know, all that stuff. But it goes away, you know, a little bit. Everybody deals with trauma in their own way. And Something that's very traumatic for me might just be a Tuesday for you. You know what I mean? So it's really, really hard to judge, you know, trying to say what it did to somebody else, I think. I went to school and, you know, studied psychology so I could try to get a better understanding of myself. You know what I mean? Um, and what was going on. Typical PTSD, you know, startle response and, you know, hypervigilant, um, short tempers, you know, drinking problems, drug problems, you know. No two people are the same with any of it, you know. I try to hang out with the guys that are kind of more like me and, you know, it, it was a good experience and a really bad experience at one point in my life. And it was only for this amount of time. And I've lived all this time after that. And I haven't had to do any of that again. The life's pretty good. I try to be real happy about that, you know, and wake up and be happy that I'm alive 